Hi students, today we're going to go over Unit 2, Module 4, Session 1, Find the Greater Fraction. On number 1 says, find the least common multiple for each pair of numbers, show all your work. Let's remind ourselves what a multiple means. Remember, we have multiples and we have factors. And a multiple is for any factor multiplied by another factor, we get a multiple. So here you see an example, multiples of 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 6 is 18. So we're listing out the multiples of 3 and the multiples of 5. And then we find the LCM, which means least common multiple, is 15. So let's try it with 4 and 6. So we're going to go ahead and list out the multiples of 4. So we list out the multiples of 4. We have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Now let's list out the multiples of 6. So we have 6, 12, 18, 24. We'll stop there. Do we see a multiple that is in common between 4 and 6? Yes, we actually see a couple. We see 12 and we see 24. But remember, I'm finding the least common multiple. Which one is least? Is it 12 or 24? Yes, that's correct. The answer is 12. So 12 is the least common multiple between 4 and 6. Let's try to do the same thing with 3 and 7. Listing out the multiples of 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. Let's do the same thing for 7. We have 7, 14, 21, 28, and we'll stop there. Do we see multiple that they have in common? Let's see, I'm looking. Oh, yes, there I see 21. 21 and 21 matches. Any others? No. So 21 is our least common multiple. And let's do the same for 5 and 8. Listing out the multiples of 5, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And we'll do the same for 8. We have 8, 16, 24, 8 times 4 is 32, and we have 40. So what's our least common multiple? That's right, 40 is our least common multiple. And then for D, we'll do the same thing again. We're listing out the multiples of 6 and 9. For 6, we have 6, 12, 18, and 24. Listing them out for 9, we have 9, 18, 27. Oh, then we're going to stop there, because do we see a multiple in common? Yes, 18. And moving on to number 2, use the least common multiple to find equivalent fractions for each fraction pair. Then use a symbol less than or greater than to show the bigger fraction. So here we see an example, and then we've changed it into equivalent fractions, and we're showing the equivalencies to them, or the greater than or less than comparing the two fractions. Let's try it for A. So first step is we're listing out the multiples of 8 and 3. Why? Because I'm finding the denominator, the least common denominator. So I'm listing out the multiples of 8. So we have 8, 16, 24, 32, and now we're doing the same for 3. We have 3, 6, 9. I'm only going to go until I come up with a multiple that I've already found for 8. 3, 6, 9, 12. 12, we have 15. Then we have 18. Then we have... Is this correct? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 8 is 24. So where do we see our least common multiple? That's right, 24. 
And so now we're going to change 5 eighths to be an equivalent fraction with 24 as the denominator. So we're going to take 5 eighths and we're going to multiply it by, looking at 8, 1, 2, 3. We're taking 8 and multiplying it by 3 because 8 times 3 is 24. And so we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by 3. And so we get 15 24ths. And then we're doing the same for 2 thirds. 2 thirds equals 2 thirds times what? So we look times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6, times 7, times 8. So we're multiplying times 8. So 2 thirds times 8 equals, that's a pretty awful 8 there. Let's see if we can fix that. 2 times 8 is 16, and 3 times 8 is 24. Now we're comparing 15 24 to 16 24 And we're going to say that 15 24 is less than 16 24 And so then we can conclude, comparing, going back to our original solution problem of 5 eighths and 2 thirds. Well, I know 15 24 is 5 eighths, therefore 5 eighths is less than two-thirds. That's your key part right there. That's your solution. All the other work was done to come up with the solution. The solution is five-eighths is less than two-thirds. Why? Because I compared them with the common denominator of 24, and I see that 15 24 is less than 16 24 Let's do the same for B, one-sixth and two-ninths. Now you might be thinking, wow, this is a lot of steps. Yes, it is, it is several steps. But remember, as good mathematicians, we take several steps to solve our work. So our first step is we're going to find the least common multiple for 6 and 9. And how do we do that? By listing out the multiples of 6 and 9. So 6 is 6, 12, 18. I'm going to stop there because I already know that the multiples of 9 are 9, 18, and 27. And so I know that the least common multiple is 18. And so now I can go ahead and say that 1 6 equals how many 18ths? Well, I know that I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 3 because 1, 2, 3, 6 times 3 is 18. So I'm going to say times 3 times 3, which equals 3 18ths. I'm going to do the same for 2 ninths. 9 times what? equals 18 times 2. 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18 times 2 times 2. So we have 4 eighteenths. So I know that 3 eighteenths is less than 4 eighteenths. Just comparing the fractions, I just came up with the equivalent fractions. Therefore, or so, so I can even write, so I know that 1 sixth is less than 2 ninths. So here is our final solution. And now let's move on to C, 7 twelfths. And I believe that was, is that 5 eighths? <laughs> I need to erase that a little bit so I can, so I can see. Yes, 5 eighths. 7 twelfths and 5 eighths. So again, we're going to do the same thing we've done before, which we're going to find the least common multiples. We're going to list out the multiples for 12 and 8. So listing out the multiples of 12, we know that there's 12, 24, 36. I'm going to stop there because I can already see that there is a multiple that 12 and 8 share in common. Let's find the multiples of 8. We have 8, 16, 24, 32. So do we see a multiple that both 8 and 12 share in common? Yes, it's 24. 24 is a least common multiple. So that's going to become our least common denominator. So again, I write out 7 twelfths. 7 twelfths is the same as both 7 and 12 multiplied by 2. How do I know maybe I'm multiplying it by 2? Because I look right here, the multiple 24 is 12 times 2. 
So 7 times 2 is 14, and 12 times 2 is 24. Doing the same thing to 5 eighths. What am I going to multiply 5 eighths by? I look right here at my multiples listed. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. So I'm going to be multiplying times 3, both the numerator and the denominator. And I see I get 15 24 So now I can compare that 14 24 is less than 15 24 So I know that 7 12 is less than 5 8 there is your final answer. Continuing to number three, it says Matthew read two thirds of a book. Craig read four fifths of the same book. Who read more and how much more? So here we have two thirds Matthew read and we have Craig read four fifths of the same book. So here it's the same as what we've been doing. We need to compare fractions. So again, we're comparing two thirds and four-fifths, which is greater and by how much? And so what do we need to do? We'll list out the multiples. So we're first going to start with the thirds, listing out the multiples of three. If we look here in our denominator, we see three. So we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, we're going to do the same thing to our other denominator of 5. So listing out, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. We'll stop there. Do we see a multiple that they have in common? The least one, the lowest one? So I'm looking, oh, I see 15 right here. So it looks like 15 is going to be our least common multiple. So now we're going to change 2 thirds and 4 fifths to have 15 in the denominator. So 2 thirds, we're going to multiply by what? 2 thirds, we're going to multiply by, looking here, times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5. So we're multiplying both top and bottom by 5, and so we get 10 fifteenths. Looking at 2 thirds, or excuse me, looking at 4 fifths, what are we going to multiply to get 15 as our denominator? Five, four and five times what? Times one, times two, times three. Times three, times three. Four times three is 12. So we see that 10 fifteenths is less than 12 fifteenths. Therefore, two thirds is less than Four fifths, because I'm going back to what I see in the first part, two thirds, which is 10 fifteenths, is less than four fifths, which is 12 fifteenths. And by how much? Well, here I'm finding the difference. So I know when I find the difference, I'm subtracting. So what's the difference between 12 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths? I see the difference is two fifteenths. And so going back to the question it asked, who read more? Hmm. Who read the 12 fifteenths amount, which was four fifths? Craig. So the answer is Craig read more. How much more? Two fifteenths of a book more. So again, Craig read two fifteenths of two fifteenths more of that same book that they both read. Number four, Carlos had two extra sandwiches. They were exactly the same size. He gave seven ninths of the first sandwich to his friend Ben and four sixths of the second sandwich to his friend Corey. Whose piece is bigger, Corey's or Ben's? So we're again comparing. So we have seven ninths we're comparing to four sixths. Who, yeah, I got four sixths? Corey. Who got seven ninths? Ben. So again, we know that we need to find least common denominator. So to do that, we're going to list out the multiples of both 9 and 6. So we have 9, 18, 27. I'm going to do the same for 6. We have 6, 12, 18, 24. 
We're looking at the least common multiple, the least that they share in common, we see is 18. And so now we're going to change both our fractions to have 18 as the denominator. So we're going to have 7 ninths multiplied by what equals 18 for the denominator. And so we see right here listed on our multiples times 1 times 2. So we're multiplying both top and bottom, both numerator and denominator by 2 to get 14 18 now I know that 14 18 is an equivalent fraction to 7 9 Doing the same for 4 6 4 6 we're going to multiply to get 18 as the denominator. And we see here with listing our multiples times 1 times 2 times 3. So 4 6 times 3, both numerator and denominator, gets us to 12 18 Then we can use our equality signs to see that 14 18 is greater than 12 18 and so the question go back to the question is whose piece is bigger whose piece is bigger Corey's or ben's so ben's was the 7 9 which was 14 18 so therefore ben's is a larger piece whose is bigger the answer is ben's and then looking at the challenge problem, it says, if Carlos ate the remaining pieces of the two sandwiches, did he get more or less than Corey? Did he get more or less than Ben? So let's see. If Ben ate 7 ninths, which is the same as 14 eighteenths, how much did Carlos eat? So Carlos ate the remaining portion. So I can think, I can kind of think of a sandwich. And I know that Ben ate 14 eighteenths. How much would be left of that one whole? If in the whole piece there's 18 eighteenths, that means that his friend ate 4 eighteenths, right? Because 4 eighteenths plus 14 eighteenths equals 18 eighteenths, which is one whole. And then looking at the other sandwich that Corey ate off of, Corey ate how much? Corey ate 12 eighteenths, so a little bit less. So Corey ate 12 eighteenths. How much did Carlos then eat? Well, how much was left of the sandwich? That's right, 6 eighteenths. And so now if we combine the 4 eighteenths of this sandwich that Corey, or no, excuse me, that Carlos ate, and the 6 eighteenths that Carlos ate, what's 6 eighteenths plus 4 eighteenths? That's what I'm thinking. So 6 eighteenths plus 4 eighteenths equals 10 eighteenths. And then the question asked us, that's how much that Carlos ate. And then the question asked us, back here, did he get more or less than Ben? And again, Ben ate 7 ninths, which was the same as 14 eighteenths. And therefore, he got less than Ben. And did he get, how about Corey? Corey ate 12 18 So he got less than both Ben and Corey because he ate 10 18 Carlos ate 10 18 Corey ate 12 18 And Ben ate 14 18 And that's all for today.